Hello and welcome to RAPX Lesson 4. My name is Mrs Chiverton and I'm one of the science directors and I'm going to be taking you through this next section of work about igneous rocks and volcanoes. And as with all of our um, lessons, you're advised to have your exercise book or some paper, a pen, pencil and ruler handy in order to record information as you go along. You will be given opportunities during the PowerPoint and feel free to um, stop the video at any time if you need a little bit more extra time to um, complete those activities. I'm going to start off with thinking about chocolate, one of my favourite topics. But in this case, we're trying to relate it to science. We're using it as a model. And I want you to think about why are the holes in crunchy bars bigger in the middle than those around the edges? And I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to think about why that might be the case. Okay, so some of you will know that the central part of a crunchy bar is made through a process of melting sugar and then reacting with it so it forms the bubbles. That liquid sugar will then start to harden and crystallise and in the process the bubbles get trapped. Now the outside of the crunchy bar logically cools down faster because it's closest to the cold air around it and therefore the bubbles there don't have time to get as big before the sugar solidifies. In the centre it stays liquid for so much longer so the bubbles are able to get bigger before they actually solidify. And we're going to use that idea of size and crystallising to answer a lot of the questions about our section on igneous rocks. So our challenge for today is to be able to both describe how igneous rocks are formed and identify the differences between two types of igneous rocks, extrusive and intrusive. And we also need to be able to explain those differences and explain how they are formed. This is one way that you might find useful to record the information from today's lesson. On the left hand side, we've got the, all of the keywords from this particular topic. And then there's a space to put your notes, a description and any other information you wish to as we go through the PowerPoint. I'm going to give you about a minute to record that table if you wish to do so. If not, please feel free to fast forward through the video to the next section. Okay, so we're going to concentrate on the first three words, igneous, magma and lava. Rocks, as you know, can be put into three different groups depending on how they're formed. And igneous rocks are the final one of these groups that we need to have a look at. Now again, looking at how we make those strange scientific words, igneous comes from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. And that gives us a clue as to how igneous rocks are actually formed. So they're formed by the cooling of lava or magma. And I can hear you asking the question, well, what's the difference? What's the difference between lava and magma? And what in fact are they? Well, magma is liquid rock inside a volcano. 
so rock that has been heated up to sufficient a temperature to actually cause it to melt. And whilst it's inside the Earth's crust, we refer to it as magma. It becomes lava when it flows out of a volcano. It's still liquid at this point, so it is still the same chemical constituents. It's simply come out from un underneath the Earth's crust. Fresh lava ranges from 700 to 1200 degrees C in temperature. And you can see that it glows red to white hot, depending on how hot it is as it flows. And it flows quite slowly um, as it erupts from a volcano. So hopefully that would allow you to fill in the first three words. So you should be able to explain what igneous is, you should be able to explain what magma is, and you should be able to explain what lava is. And I'm going to give you a minute and a half to fill that information in. Volcanoes are obviously extremely important when it comes to explaining how um, igneous rocks are actually formed. So we're going to look in a little bit more detail about what a volcano is and what happens within volcanoes. The Earth's crust is made up of huge slabs called tectonic plates and they fit together a little bit like a jigsaw puzzle. You can see in the diagram an example of the major tectonic plates that make up our Earth's crust. And where those red lines are, that's the joins between those tectonic plates. And those plates are not completely fixed together. So they're able to move around due to convection currents in the mantle below them. If you remember from a previous lesson, the mantle is that semi-molten area of rock below our Earth's crust. And it's incredibly hot down there. Now the plates don't move huge amounts, maybe only two to three centimetres a year, but they are able to move. And between the crust and the mantle is a substance called magma, and that's made, as we've said already, of molten rock and gases. When two plates collide together as they move, one section will slide on top of the other and the other one is pushed down below. Of course, as it gets pushed down, it's coming closer to the mantle and that extreme heat and temperature, and it will actually cause the rocks within the crust to melt and form the magma. And this is a cutaway view of a typical volcano. 
The brown layers show the Earth's crust. We have the magma chamber within that. That's where the rocks are actually being melted and formed into molten rock. There's usually a main vent, one large opening to the Earth's crust. And you can also get things like secondary vents forming as um, lava and magma squeeze out through um, fissures in the rock surface. You might not know, but the word volcano actually comes from um, the name Vulcan, which isn't something from Star Trek. Originally, it was a Roman god of fire from Roman mythology. Now, that formation of magma that we've just talked about and the continued heating caused pressure to increase within the magma chamber. As pressure in the molten rock builds up, it needs to escape somewhere, so it forces its way through any weaknesses, usually fissures which are narrow cracks in the Earth's crust. And once the magma erupts from the Earth's surface, it's then become lava, and at which point it will start to come. So we could think of volcanoes as giant safety valves that release the pressure that builds up in the Earth. So just to review, the magma, as it pressure builds, will find a weakness and force its way through to the surface. The lava it then flows across the surface and as it cools, it builds up in layers, eventually forming the dome shape that we expect to see with a volcano. Igneous rocks are formed at that point because they have cooled down. But the lava doesn't always come out through the top of the volcano. We can end up with side chambers of magma. And again, because that magma is further away from the hot mantle, it will eventually cool. And we also get igneous rocks forming at this point as well. You also often get gas vents coming out of the side and pyroclastic clouds, which are rocks that are thrown out under really high pressure as a volcano actually erupts. And it's these poisonous glasses and um, liquid rocks that are thrown out that often cause the major damage when a volcano erupts. So hopefully you can now describe a volcano, what a tectonic plate is and the processes that happen during an eruption. And I'm going to give you two minutes in order to actually record that information. OK, that's your time up. But again, don't panic if you haven't got everything down. There is a summary at the end and you can always add any other information or watch the video again. So how many volcanoes are there actually around the world producing igneous rocks? You might be surprised to know that there are 1,510 active volcanoes in the world. That means that they are producing gases, pyroclastic clouds and lava flows at some point on a fairly regular basis. And all of this time producing new igneous rock. 
There are currently about 80 or so volcanoes which are actually underneath the oceans and they also form new igneous rock in that process of erupting. If there are serious eruptions under the oceans we can get difficulties like tsunamis. Now we need to look at our two different types of igneous rock, the differences between them and how they form. The first one we're going to look at is extrusive igneous rocks. Now extrusive igneous rocks are formed with very small crystals as a result of the magma or lava in this case cooling very very quickly. So as the magma exits the earth and comes in contact with the cold air or the cold water around it, it cools incredibly quickly and as a result the crystals that grow are so small that sometimes they're actually almost impossible to see as separate crystals. There's an example here, basalt, and you can see with the scale on the diagram that the crystals that are interlocked together there are extremely small. So the other type of igneous rocks that we need to look at are intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive igneous rocks um, form deep in the Earth's crust um, above the layers of the mantle where the surface temperatures are still incredibly hot. As a result, the process by which crystallisation happens is a much longer, slower process and in doing so, larger crystals are able to form. The picture shows a classic example of igneous intrusive rock, which is granite. And you can see from um, the scale of the person's finger compared to the crystals that they are much, much larger than we saw in the extrusive igneous rock. So that should allow you to fill in the final three word, main words on our keywords, extrusive, intrusive and crystallisation. And I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to fill in those remaining pieces of information. Okay, so hopefully you've taken on board all of the stages that go into making the two different types of igneous rock. What you've got here are six statements that actually summarise all of that, but of course they're in completely the wrong order. So I'm going to give you about a minute and a half to try and sort those out and put them into the correct order. Go.
Right, so did you get them correct? Let's have a look. The first stage that we would identify that inside the earth is a magma and it's molten rock. And we would say that volcanoes erupt and magma comes to the surface. And lava is the name for that magma which comes to the surface. And when it gets there, it cools very quickly because of the temperature difference and it makes igneous rocks with very small crystals. Some of the magma doesn't make it as far as the surface and it cools much more slowly underground and it turns solid and it makes igneous rocks with much larger crystals. So hopefully you manage to get all of those correct. So here's our summary so far. Igneous rocks are formed from magma or molten rock cooling and becoming solid. The magma that makes igneous rocks comes from other rocks that have been melted and they can be made below the surface from magma as intrusive rocks or above the surface from lava as extrusive rocks. We know that volcanoes are caused by tectonic plates in the Earth's crust moving due to convection currents in the semi-molten mantle, moving the plates and allowing a magma chamber to form. And that over time pressure builds and the magma is released. And when magma reaches the surface and bursts through the crust, it's now referred to as lava. So hopefully that will help you to fill in any missing details on the table of information or your notes that you've made as we've gone through this um, video. Now our final section is to look at the characteristics of igneous rocks and the picture here shows common igneous rocks, a whole variety of them, and they have common characteristics as you can see. If you look closely at them, for example, we've got granite, basalt, diorite, pumice and obsidian. They're very different to the metamorphic and sedimentary rocks that we've looked at previously. So our characteristics when we look at those types of rocks are that igneous rocks are made up of interlocking crystals. Now that's very easy to see in the extrusive igneous rocks but it's not quite so clear sometimes in the intrusive um, igneous rocks where the crystals are very very small. But what you can't see are gaps or separate grains within the actual rock itself. So no separate grains there. We don't see layers in igneous rock at, at all, whereas metamorphic and sedimentary rock had very clear layers. And they're also extremely hard, and that's because they have been pro, um, formed by that crystallisation, solidification of molten rock. They can also appear very glassy and you can see some very clear examples of that in the pictures that I've included here. So this should allow you to fill in the final section with our description about the characteristics of igneous rocks. And I'm going to give you a minute and a half to do that. So here's our final summary for you to look at and again go back and add any individual information to any notes or the table that you've actually produced. I would pause the video if you want to have a good look at these information now. If not, you can move on to the tasks that are set to go along with this. So your first task is to complete the Google quiz. Test your knowledge that you've gained very quickly and you'll get immediate feedback on those answers. For a more extended answer, task two is to describe in detail what a volcano is and how it's formed and why it erupts. And within that, you should include where, when and how igneous rocks form 
during this process? And that's an extended answer question and will be marked by your teacher and feedback will be given to you on that. And then finally, extension task three um, is a little bit more fun and it's about making a volcano. And maybe some of you have done this before. So I've given you all of the instructions and the major ingredients. The quantities do not have to be exact um, and um, use whatever container you've got. I will warn you though, it can make quite a mess. So as I've said, I would suggest you do this on a tray or outside in order um, to make sure that you're enjoying it without having too much um, to clear up. I've included a couple of pictures to the side there. One is making the volcano using papier-mâché and obviously you could then paint that and decorate it as you wanted to. Another alternative, and um, that version is they've banked um, potting compost around it to make it more realistic as to what a volcano would actually look like. Um, the food colouring, I've suggested red for lava, but you could use whatever you wanted. Or if you don't have any food colouring, just leave that bit out um, and just make sure you've got the vinegar, um, the washing up liquid, the water and the baking soda. Though Those are our vital four ingredients. So I look forward to seeing some of your photographs um, and uh, or videos being sent to me by your science teachers. And I hope you enjoy uh, having a chance to get a little bit messy and a little bit of fun making your volcanoes. Thank you for listening to today's session and I will see you all again in session five on rocks soon.